Okay folks, on today's episode, what we're gonna be talking about is Fox body drivability issues. I hear all kinds of horror stories out there about people throwing money and time at their cars and never getting to the bottom of their drivability issue. And what I mean by drivability issue, my car's idling really weird, or it falls on its face at higher RPM. I hit a street light and it dies. Whatever, these are all drivability issues that these cars are well known for, but the biggest thing that they are also well known for is vacuum leaks, okay? Folks go out there and they talk to their friends, they hit the forums, whatever, and they get all of this advice for things that their friends have changed on their car to get rid of their drivability issues. It doesn't necessarily mean that that's your problem. What you need to do is you need to establish a baseline, and the baseline is, make sure your motor is airtight okay you got to check it for vacuum leaks first and foremost once you get past all that then move on to the next thing changing some hard parts so what i'm about to show you here today is how to test your engine for vacuum leaks here we are under the hood of the 1991 convertible and before we get into the smoke machine i want to show you some of the more common areas that these cars can have vacuum leaks underneath the plenum is very common there's vacuum hoses and a vacuum tree there can be a really common area for vacuum leak. Your lower intake underneath the plenum is another common area. Your vacuum tree, your throttle body area, all of these can suffer from vacuum leaks. And these vacuum leaks can be very, very difficult to find without the aid of a smoke machine because you have to have the engine running. The sound of the engine drowns out any sort of hiss you might hear from a vacuum leak. Not to mention the fact that sometimes they don't make any noise, they just leak and you can't hear them. So here I have a smoke machine that I built from parts from my local hardware store for less than 20 bucks. That's actually a toilet flange. Anyway, how this works is on either side of the pipe, I've got holes drilled to which I've ran studs through, studs being bolts with a nut on this side to hold it stationary. And I run leads off of it to my battery. And why I do that is on the inside of this is a candle wick that is soaking up Johnson's baby oil. And then there's a wire wrapped around the wick that's tied to each one of these studs. And when you add resistance to that wire, it heats it up and ultimately creates smoke. So here I'll show you, I got my positive lead on there. I'm gonna attach this side to the negative and it makes heat ultimately creating smoke. So when you have the lid on this, it keeps the smoke contained in the housing of this smoke machine. And then on one side here, I've drilled in, this is just an air chuck off an air compressor. And I've got a hose that comes down to my air compressor. So I'll feed it air, ultimately shooting air through the body of this machine, out the other side and around and into my throttle body right here. Now you might be asking yourself, what's the glove for? So the glove is blocking the smoke in the engine. I've removed my intake hose here and just put a silicone rubber glove on here because as you feed air into the engine and smoke, it's gonna wanna back itself out and out here into your air filter. So you need a way of containing the smoke in the air in the engine so it can ultimately leak out any area that you might have a vacuum leak. Okay, so I'm gonna go ahead and hook everything up and we'll start feeding this thing smoke. Now, I don't expect to find any kind of vacuum leaks in this car because I've already gone through this process, but you never know. So what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna take my negative lead and I'm gonna hook it up to my battery and get this machine start loading itself up with smoke. And then here, you can see I'm gonna start feeding this thing air. If you watch on the far side of the throttle body, you'll see that glove start expanding. Because I'm ultimately feeding this engine air and smoke. And 
and I don't seem to have any smoke coming out of this engine at all, which is a good sign, meaning that I, I don't have any vacuum leaks. Now, for what it's worth, I'll just give you a quick little show as to what you could be looking for if you had a vacuum leak. Well, there you can see the smoke coming out of there. But let's say you had one from underneath your plenum going on. This is what you would ultimately see. Okay, you'd start seeing smoke roaring out of there. And that's the sign you're looking for. Wherever there's smoke, well, I hate to use the cliche, but there's gonna be fire, and that's where you're having your vacuum leak from. I can't stress this enough, guys. Please, 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 check your car for vacuum leaks. These cars will act absolutely haywire if they have any sort of vacuum leak. Stop throwing money and hard parts at your car. Establish yourself a baseline and get these vacuum leaks figured out. I showed you, you can do this for less than 20 bucks. You can buy all the parts from your local hardware store. Check your car, get the vacuum leaks fixed before you do anything else, okay? I hope this video helped you out. Please, by all means, hit me up. If you got any questions or comments, hit me up in the comments section down below and I'll help you out. Or if you know someone else that's experiencing some drivability issues with their Fox, please share this. I love helping the community and that's why I take all this time and do these videos. So thanks a lot for watching guys. I really appreciate it and I'll catch you on the next one. Take care. Bye for now.